I think accountability means, you know, taking action when you feel like something unjust or unfair has, been ha has happened to you personally or to a group of people, even if it doesn't directly happen to you. It simply means being held responsible for one's own actions. Being held to a standard that is fit is my definition of being held accountable. I think it would mean like taking people's opinions seriously and their, and their complaints. Accountability is really just intent, like doing what you mean when you mean it, when you say you're gonna do it. I feel like it's like owning up for what your actions are just kind of following through with what you say or do or just having like, if you have like a one thought, just like kind of keep with it or something or not, try not to like contradict it and stuff like that. Being responsible to no one but yourself and holding yourself to a higher standard. Uh, if you wouldn't tell your grandma about it proudly, you probably shouldn't do it. Accountability is waking up and not going to your phone for the first 10 minutes that you're awake and resisting the urge. Accountability is knowing that you committed yourself to your word, even in your own mind, that you say you want to do something. And whenever you do those little things that distract you from that, you're not accountable. That you can feel that you're not accountable, but you still push on and it wears at you and just drags you down. You have to fight it. It's, it's really annoying, it sucks, but you have to fight it. And it actually feels better once you do. My name's Henry, uh, I'm a junior biology major. The university is doing a really good job with kind of adjusting to the times. Uh, I mean, I, we came in and it was COVID and so they did a really great job kind of handling that transition into like half online, half not online. Uh, but I think as the times are kind of going on a little bit, especially with like ChatGPT, I know there's a lot of sort of academic dishonesty uh, and there's just not a whole lot of accountability for students who aren't following code of conduct. Uh, and it's kind of hard knowing that I have to apply to graduate school uh, when there are students in my classes who are uh, not being fair in, in classes and whatnot. And so I just hope that the university finds a little bit of a better way to kind of handle that and manage that in the near future. My name is Grace. I'm a sophomore in civil engineering. I've definitely used ChatGPT for helping me kind of guide my research of like, all right, I have no clue how to start this sentence. All right, and kind of using ChatGPT more as a research assistant and kind of using them as a sounding board of, hey, if I type this in, how does it react to me? I use, I could see ChatGPT using similar to like Grammarly or stuff like that. I'm Madeline, I'm an ad PR major and I'm involved in Greek life on campus. I'm a freshman. Um, I think when I think about accountability, I think a lot more about accountability Accountability within the classroom, there's like an expectation for students to stay on top of their coursework, to check the syllabus, and to keep up with readings and assignments. But I feel like when it comes to professors, each professor um, doesn't utilize Canvas in the same ways that I feel like the university wants us to. And so then when students talk about it in course evaluations, um, it's like a big point of complaint. And I feel like a lot of times the university doesn't do anything to change it. I think it would be awesome if they could like mandate like what you had to have on your Canvas page because it can be really frustrating when I feel like I have no information in a class. And I feel like that's why a lot of students then look towards um, rate my professor, but also that can be very like biased. So it's just kind of hard to figure out. My name is Anna Hilton. I'm um, a fourth year biochemistry and food science major. Typically, I think that departments, especially in STEM, they uh, only look at like what percent of students pass and what percent of students don't. So that's the way that they typically keep professors accountable. Uh, but I don't think it's enough data. I think they need to be um, really focusing on um, what the professor is doing in the classroom. My name's Trey Leger. I am a business major. I love the professors here. The professors are really personal. If you, if you actually put the effort forward to make a personal connection with your professor and maybe go stop by their office hours and have a conversation and get to know them and they get to know you, I promise you, everything at the end of the semester will go great. Like, I have so many professors that, like one of my professors gave me all of spring break to turn in an assignment that was due two weeks before spring break even started. Like, dude, all you gotta do is make a connection, talk to them, be a person, they're, they're people too. I mean, some professors are complete and utterly robotic. I'll just say that the nice way. And they live by their syllabus. 
you will catch a professor here and there, but most of these people, they're really nice. They're really sweet. And they, they want to actually engage with the classroom. And a lot of students don't even give the professors the opportunity to really engage with them. So, yeah. I'm Danny Gibson. I'm a forensic science major, first year. I think that there's like two sides of the spectrum. I think some professors do a really great job providing resources and making sure they're sending out Canvas announcements. Um, a lot of professors will look at questions and realize like, oh, everybody missed this. That was clearly like something I taught badly or worded the question badly. So like they understand where they went wrong and what to do better. Um, and then conversely, students on the other side hold themselves accountable by studying for studying and reading the textbook and like using their resources that the professors provide efficiently. The other side of that spectrum is like professors that just kind of give you a textbook and they just hope you figure it out. Um, I know that some professors just kind of read PowerPoints and you know that's all that they have to do but they can't expect students to go the extra mile if they aren't so they have to you know accountability in that sense is just like meeting each other where, where, where they're at and making it a mutually beneficial relationship, you know? Hello, I'm Lauren Marshall. I'm a sophomore nutrition, exercise, and health science major. I'm also in the pre-PT program. I feel like Greek life is really important because um, I'm honestly scared for all the girls that'll go to like frat houses and stuff like that um, because they're supposed to be safe and I don't want them to get hurt. Like, even if I don't want know them, I don't want them to go through their experience of like getting harassed in any way, and I think that People, they should feel welcome in those frat houses and stuff like that. Hi, uh, my name is Will Green. I'm a junior political science and economics major. I'm not from Nebraska, but my dad's from Nebraska and he went to the university and he said that Fiji was infamous in like the 1980s and 1990s for having like these horrific actions against women. Like, I mean, assaults, um, you know, unwanted sex, just spewing hatred and negativity. I feel that as a student body, we've really come together to speak out against these. It was really reaffirming and reassuring to see all the student body come and like, you know, rally against them and even seeing other Greek like houses like put signs up. But Fiji's had this awful history and has been banned from campus multiple times. And to see that that wasn't like hook, line and sinker of just getting them off forever and they just got hit with another like five year ban is just really disappointing. I feel it goes back into economics. Like it's a, it's a monetary game, it's a cash cow, having Greek life organizations. Um, Fiji just has a lot of alumnus and donors and I think it definitely is a money issue. Again, it was so reassuring to see like everybody on campus come together against it, but I feel the university will never do anything about it because it just is an economic revenue for them, and that's really upsetting. I feel that if there were proper accountability, Fiji wouldn't have a place here like ever again. They just had such a horrid history, and like, I don't know what they could possibly do to get permanently kicked off after this last thing that happened a year and a half ago. So I know probably one of the like easier like or more well-known topics would be uh, when it comes to sexual assault and harassment with Greek life, or just in general on campus. Um, and I, I'm not in Greek life at all. I have friends who are though. Um, and so just from the outside, I can say that just even speaking about it, all the, you know, the frats and sororities have the no more, we stand with sexual assault survivors and such. Um, and while I know a lot of people can see that as lip service and really just, you know, doing it because they got told to or else they'll get fined or whatever, but it also can mean a lot to someone who has dealt with those situations or has, is trying to support someone who has been sexually assaulted. Um, and while it may just seem con inconsequential to someone else, it could really just be one more piece of support for someone in their, um, w when they're struggling with this crisis. My name is Mark Prophet. I'm a sophomore here on the university. I, my, I am a marketing major and well, I'm a member of the Acacia International Fraternity here on campus. Well, my fraternity, I feel, has done everything right. We had multiple, multiple of my brothers were actively present and participants throughout, during the Fiji protests, and we held lots of meetings discussing it. And frankly, we were disgusted by what had transpired. At first, there was the obvious, you know, some said take away their house, you know, drive them from campus, but when you look into it, you realize that that's not an option. It, their, their house on campus is a privately, is private property. The university has no authority there. They cannot expel every student from that fraternity, which means this is, well, this is not the first incident that this, that Fiji had. It's, second, third, I think maybe even be the fourth time something like this has happened. And there's really not much that can be done. I can't, 
can't, the university did the best it could, which was essentially just removing them from the website, but that was not enough. Uh, my name is Olaren Waju Bakare, and I'm a computer science student. I'm a sophomore currently at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. My freshman year of uh, college, uh, I was like harassed by one of the RSO officers on campus, and you know, I took action. I, I posted about it. I reached out to the UNLPD, to our other black RSOs on campus, and uh, action was taken about it. Because of, because of that whole event, I think uh, there was more awareness about, uh, about uh, the black community and how uh, we interacted. The, I think they call them CSOs, you know, like the people that like patrol campus, right? Yeah, so this guy was like harassing me, asked me for my NUID when I was on uh, college property, you know, I was literally in my dorm. You know, so I reported that incident and other incidents in the future. So to me, holding people accountable is just like taking action, doing your part. If you see something, if you feel like you've been treated unjust or uh, something has been done unfairly to you, then reach out to the appropriate people. Honestly, at first I was kind of like frustrated, but because I thought they weren't moving uh, quickly enough with the case. But I feel like the chief of police, uh, Hazan Ramsa, he handled the case well. and. Uh, he made the necessary steps to make sure it didn't happen again. Although the officer that harassed me wasn't like fired or anything, he was put on a, I think on, on hold or something like they, he wasn't able to work for like a certain number of weeks. And uh, they made new policies where you can see each uh, CSO officer that is patrolling the building and everything, you know? Yeah, uh, I think. I think some changes were made, not to the extent that I, I wanted it to be, but you, you have to start with something, you know, so you have to start from somewhere. Uh, yeah, pretty much.